Growers optimize temperature, light intensity, VPD, nutrients. One of the things that we see growers struggle with is the airflow. Hey, I'm Juan from Canicurs Consulting, and today we're here to discuss some concepts that we implement to help commercial growers all over the world operate as efficiently and successfully as possible. In every facility that we walk through, we see a slightly different fan configuration. We may have oscillating fans, or we may have fixed fans pointing a specific direction. What we like to see in a grow room is fans pointing a single direction so that it creates a laminar flow. What this does is that there's a constant flow of air over the top of the canopy, making it easier for the grower to manage the airflow. Oscillating fans could work, but at the same time, the oscillation could create gusts of wind in different areas, causing points of non-uniformity. One of the most important things when designing your cultivation room is to make sure that your airflow is as optimal as possible. We want the airflow to be controlled at the canopy level, where the most risk of disease and pathogen could occur. What we've seen in the past is that when we have low airflow below 0.5 meter per second, is that the risk of botrytis or pod rot increases by quite a bit, especially if the canopy is quite dense. So the reason why you want to have airflow above 0.5 meter per second is so that you can disrupt the microclimate that is being formed around your leaf by pulling away the moisture that's in the canopy and around that leaf. On the other hand, if it's above 1.5 meter per second, we might see non-uniform transpiration levels. And this can translate to plants drying down at different rates, some plants drying out too fast or staying too wet. If the airflow in your room is not uniform, either because it's too low or too high, you may have issues with irrigation in which the plants are not drying back as they should. So how do we measure airflow? This is that we like to use the most is a hot wire anemometer because it gives us the highest accuracy at even low airflow levels. Here I have a Testo 405i connected to my phone. There are different types of anemometers to measure airflow. You may have seen the type with a fan, the vein type anemometer. However, this one here is a hot wire anemometer. The way that it works is that it heats up the wire and the wind will cool down the wire so that you can actually see the airflow level. This one in particular measures airflow coming in one direction. However, some more expensive versions can measure airflow coming from different directions or an omnidirectional anemometer. These are particularly useful when you have oscillating fans in your room and you may want to see airflow coming from different directions. So the reason why I like this sensor is because it measures not only airflow but also temperature. It also has a telescopic wand so that you can reach parts of your canopy that you may not be able to reach otherwise. So let's say your tables are five foot or four foot wide and you're able to reach areas in the canopy where you might not be able to see those areas of high humidity or very low airflow. We like to measure the airflow at canopy level using a systematic approach. What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the airflow on each individual table at different points throughout the table. With this data, we can then create a map in which we can see areas of high airflow or low airflow. So if you're interested in having Canicribs Consulting assist in designing, building, or optimizing your facility, please fill out the intake form below. Even if your operation is running well, we can be a sounding board for finding your facility, educating your team, or streamlining your processes. We work worldwide and our team consults in five different languages. If you're interested, reach out to us and we can quote you in our services. All right, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.